कहा यीशु तेरे दरबार में आया हूँ मैं यहाँ यीशु तेरे दरबार में दरबार में हो तेरी स्तुति दरबार में हो आराधना दरबार में हो तेरी स्तुति दरबार में हो आराधना आया हूँ मैं यहाँ मैं आशिक तेरा मैं ना शर्माऊंगा आशिक हूं मैं तेरा मैं ना घबराऊंगा आशिक हूं मैं तेरा मैं ना शर्माऊंगा आशिक हूं मैं तेरा मैं ना घबराऊंगा यीशु तू मेरा जिंदा खुदा तू ही तो मेरा है मसीहा यीशु तू मेरा जिंदा खुदा तू ही तो मेरा है मसीहा दाऊद की तरह मैं ना चुंगा यीशु मैं ना चुंगा मैं ना चुंगा यीशु आज तो मैं ये कुछ ऐसा गाऊंगा आज तो मैं ये कुछ ऐसा नाचूंगा आज तो मैं ये कुछ ऐसा गाऊंगा आज तो मैं ये कुछ ऐसा ना चूंगा शांति का राजा तू बादशाह मौत को तूने हरा दिया शांति का राजा तू बादशाह मौत को तूने हरा दिया तू जो जिंदा है मैं झूंगा यीशु मैं झूंगा मैं आशिक तेरा यीशु मैं आशिक तेरा आया हूँ मैं यहाँ यीशु तेरे दरबार में आया हूँ मैं यहाँ यीशु तेरे दरबार में दरबार में हो तेरी स्तुति दरबार में हो आराधना दरबार में हो तेरी स्तुति दरबार यहोवा का तुम धन्यवाद करो 
क्योंकि वो भला है उसकी करुणा सदा की है क्योंकि वो भला है यह का तुम धन्यवाद करो क्योंकि वो भला है उसकी करुणा सदा की है क्योंकि वो भला है कहल लुया कहल लुया कहल लुया हले लुया कहल लुया कहल लुया कहल लुया हले लुया प्रभुओं का प्रभु है वो ईश्वरों का ईश्वर है उसका तुम धन्यवाद करो वो राजाओं का राजा है वो प्रभुओं का प्रभु है वो ईश्वरों का ईश्वर है उसका तुम धन्यवाद करो यह का तुम धन्यवाद करो क्योंकि वो भला है उसकी करुणा सदा की है क्योंकि वो भला है कहल लुया कहल लुया कहल लुया हले लुया कहल लुया कहल लुया कहल लुया हले लुया जैसा कोई नहीं उसके समान कोई नहीं वो शक्तिमान प्रभु है उसका तुम धन्यवाद करो उसके जैसा कोई नहीं उसके समान कोई नहीं वो शक्तिमान प्रभु है उसका तुम धन्यवाद करो यह का तुम धन्यवाद करो क्योंकि वो भला है उसकी करुणा सदा की है क्योंकि वो भला है कहल लुया कहल लुया कहल लुया हले लुया कहल लुया कहल लुया कहल लुया हले लुया को हराता वो है मेज को सामने बिछाता वो है जय का झंडा हमें देता वो है उसका तुम धन्यवाद करो हमारे शत्रु को हराता वो है मेज को सामने बिछाता वो है जय का झंडा हमें देता वो है उसका तुम धन्यवाद करो यह का तुम धन्यवाद करो क्योंकि वो भला है उसकी करुणा सदा की है क्योंकि वो भला है यह का तुम धन्यवाद करो क्योंकि वो भला है उसकी करुणा सदा की है क्योंकि वो भला है कहल कहल लुया हले लुया कहल लुया कहल लुया कहल लुया हले लुया
you have your Bibles, we can turn to the book of um, Matthew 5 and 8, uh, verse 8. And um, it's a very simple verse, you know, almost like one of those verses we get through. You know, when we read the Bible, we just like read it through and don't pay too much attention to it because it's really small. But, you know, I believe that God is a God of details. Yeah. You know? We need to pay attention to the details because that's what makes the difference. You know, I had some, I had a man of God say, you can tell how diligent and how um, how a person where a person will end up in his life by the at- by the amount of attention he pays on details so I do want to pay attention on details um, so if we re- I'm reading from the message version because I found it really interesting uh, the way it's interpreted in the message version and it says you're blessed when you get your inside world your mind and heart put right then you see God in the outside world and today we're going to talk about seeing God yeah. you know we often and if you're writing if you're taking notes the title of my sermon would be to seek God's face not his hands and um, <clears throat> so let's pray <laughs> our Heavenly Father I come I come at this time into your hand let your name be raised Father in this place Holy Spirit let, let, you, let your word be spoken here God yeah. let your kingdom come in this place in Jesus' name I ask you. Amen. amen. So, when you, so when I come across this verse, and I've been studying this verse, and this is, a very beautiful, um, this is a very beautiful and very significant part of Jewish tradition. We just heard Pastor John share about the Shema, which is the prayer that every Jew would do. Every single Jew, when the first thing they do is when they wake up in the morning, they would say this prayer. And the prayer is from Deuteronomy 6. It says... Um, Please let me know if I'm going too fast, because I tend to start speaking really fast. <laughs> but um, it's from Deuteronomy 6, and it says, um, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Is one. Let us understand that this is a culture where uh, Israel is in the exile. They're, they're in exile, and they're surrounded with thousands of pagans of pagan gods. And so this prayer is where Moses is telling Israel, Remember that there is only one God. There is not hundreds of gods like the Greek beliefs we see where there are so many gods, but there is one God. Yeah. And so, and then the second part of it, and it says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. That's the second part of the prayer. Jesus did this prayer. Paul did this prayer. Peter did this prayer. Every Hebrew, every Jew person would make this prayer. And so, when I, when I started thinking about this prayer and the significance of this prayer, and we look, at, we look at this in Matthew, where Jesus is sitting on the mountain, okay, he's sitting on the mountain, and he has this multitude of people, and a similar scene of that, most commentators compare Jesus with Moses. They say Jesus, because Moses sat on the mountain, he, that's where he gave the law, the Ten Commandments, at Mount Sinai, but then you see Jesus sitting on a mountain. Now, it, it was not Sinai. I, I did my research. It was not Sinai. But Jesus sitting on the mountain. And most commentators say that this is uh, the fulfillment of the prophecy of, in Isaiah that Jesus is, giving, Jesus is the lawgiver. But in contrast to that, I find it very interesting that they compare Jesus to Moses because in my heart, Jesus is God. And if Matthew is if Matthew's trying to show something, it is Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Yeah. So I look at it as more as, I, don't, I wouldn't compare Jesus with Moses. I say Jesus is God. Yeah. As God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, so Jesus is giving his disciples these commandments. So just putting that out there. But um, when, he says in, when he says in Matthew 8, he says, um, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. There is two aspects to this. There is two aspects to this work. There is an aspect on the inside. There is an aspect on your inside because we've been hearing about your inner world, about your inside, and there is an aspect of your actions on the outside. And all throughout the Old Testament, Moses gave the law in Leviticus and um, the temple and all the rituals. We see Israel's one main focus was to enter into a relationship with God. In fact, even today, when we look at the Middle East, the whole, the, it's a war zone because of this very belief that they believe that if the temple is rebuilt, they will come back to that relationship with God. And I just want to put it out there that how privileged are we that every Sunday we come and we experience what they long to experience. 
it is a privilege, you know, it is a privilege for us to come and sit here. Oftentimes, I take it for granted in my life to go to church. But this, if COVID taught me anything, it taught me that it's a privilege. It's a privilege to come and worship God. It's a privilege to come and listen to the Word of God and be in a relationship with God. And so, so here we see, like, Jesus is saying something completely flipping it over and to what they believe. Because the Jews, they believe that you perform your rituals, you perform your works, yeah. and that's what makes you pure. You know, before the priest used to enter into the temple and the Holy of Holy, he used to have to cleanse himself seven times, wear a certain type of clothes, have a shower seven times. Now that's clean, have <laughs> a shower seven times in one day. Like, I struggle to have seven times a week now, joking. <laughs> but he, he's, he's having, they have to cleanse themselves, they have to keep themselves holy, they have to perform these rituals and they strongly believe that these rituals are the ones that make them pure. These rituals are the ones that will bring them into a relationship with God. And I think that oftentimes we think the same. We think the same. Growing up, I grew up uh, in a, I grew up as a Christian, but my, my parents are the first converts from Muslim. My dad's the first con Muslim convert in my family. And I, from what I notice is the Muslims think similar. You know, so they carry, even though there is a conversion, you know, it takes time to change everything about your behavior. And so, trust me, when I tell you, I grew up in the church, I knew what it was like to perform on the outside. You know, kid you not, pastor, there was this one time that we had, um, we had all the youth just like this lining up. And uh, the, all the leaders were praying for the kids. It was dark, you know, they had their worship music going on. And they were, they were praying and... All of a sudden, I, I looked next to me and I saw this girl. She just started crying and speaking in tongues. And I said, man, I'm the pastor's son. I have to better her. I have to do something better than her, right? I have to, I have to, I have to make her look like a normal person. So kid you not, and I'm just, I just started screaming and yelling, ah, just screaming and going through the motions. And my dad's like, what's happening to you? I was like, I don't know. I'm angry. <laughs> I was like, why are you angry? But anyway, so I know what it's like. Like, for 16 years in my life, I believed that it was very important for me to show people how holy I am, how pure I am, what a relationship with God I have. But there was this one specific time, I remember, when I was sitting in, um, I was about, I was 18 years old. It was in 2014. I was about to go on my missions trip. I was to Thailand and do a missions trip. And uh, like I said, you know, I, here I am. I felt like Paul or Peter in the Bible, you know, about to go on your missions trip, get, get, your, you know, get your sermon ready and everything. And so I said, I'm going to fast and pray. I'm going to go fast and pray on this missions trip. And we used to have this little prayer hall where we used to get together. And it, you could, it was open whenever you wanted to go. You could walk in there and pray. And so one afternoon, I was in the house praying. And um, this was when I was reading Acts. Right, Acts just gasses you up, makes you want to feel like a superhuman, you know. <laughs> like, so I was reading Acts and I was praying. I was praying, God, give me, give me your strength, give me your power, give me your spirit. Like, fill me up. Like, you know, I want to walk out of this place like Storm from the X Men or something. You know, just <laughs> like I walk past and people will just fall and they'll be like demon people, demon possessed people getting free and all kinds of things, healings. And so I'm praying, I'm like, God, give me that power, give me those gifts of the Spirit, and you know, like you gave Paul, like you gave Peter, like you gave all these apostles. And then I do, I'm praying, I'm praying, and I just look up, and there's this picture, there's this picture frame written by Lauren Cunningham, and it says, um, it said, the power of God is not to make an explosion for your personal gain, but the power of God is to know God's heart. Mm. And that just hit me. I said, what am I praying for? What are my prayers directed towards today? Are my prayers directed towards my personal growth, my personal edification, my personal you know, exaltation, or are my prayers genuinely wanting to know God? And when I see this, the, the Shema, and it's one of the most important verses in the Bible right there. For me, it sums up the entire Old Testament. Where God is telling people, don't forget. Teach your kids that the most important thing is to remember I'm God and to love me. And to love me. And so I want to say, I want to 
like here when Jesus is talking about, he says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And for the Jews, it will be the other side. You know, if you make yourself physically pure, if you do all these outward actions, then you will be pure inward. But what Jesus is saying is, no, no, no. You can never be pure inwards on yourself. What you need to do is believe in me, and because, through me, the Holy Spirit will come into your heart. And when the Holy Spirit comes into your heart, that's when He cleanses your heart, and that's when you can see God. That's when you enter. When I say see God, when I say see God, it's entering into a relationship with God. That close that you could see God. Because people couldn't see God in the Old Testament. People died. Priests died trying to see God. You know, That wasn't an easy thing. You had to be completely pure and sinless to see God. But now through Jesus and by the power of His Holy Spirit, right here in this place, we can experience God. We can enter into a relationship with God. How good is that? And how good is our God? You know, Oftentimes, I want to challenge you today, like God challenged me, is that oftentimes we spend ample of time. You know, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I want to say is, God, protect me. Let me go to work. You know, my boss is really annoying, please help him, or something like that, you know, I have to meet this client today, like, please give them peace, let me find favor in this one side, let this go well, let that go well, but, and then in the end, you'll just pray that small bit, but, and also let your spirit and your presence be with me today, you know, as I go, <laughs> you know, if I get a chance to preach, but I want to challenge you today that every morning, let the first thing your heart desires is a relationship with God. God, let me see your ways. Let me know your ways. Show me how I can get closer to you. Show me how I can know you. Show me how I can get into that relationship with you. And you can take that into your day. And that was a challenge in my life. And I'd like to, I'd like to put it out there today for all those who are willing to do it with me that this, this week, you know, when you wake up, whenever you do your devotions, whatever, Let's focus more on knowing God. Let's focus more on the things of God. It's very important in these times that we're living because people lose sight. I lost sight of what the really important things are. First thing I wake up, God, please get COVID out of here. Please get COVID. I don't want to live with COVID anymore. I want to travel again. I want to see my family. All these things. But is that what really God wants? What was Jesus' prayer in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane? He's tortured. He has the burden of the entire world on him. And he says, God, this cup is hard. This is bitter. This, is hurt. this hurts me. God, this is going to hurt. But let your will be done. But I'll still walk in your will. And let's, let that be our prayer today. And let's, let's have that heart. Let's remember that it's the heart that matters to God. I can quote like a hundred scriptures to you that says, even the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. So today, let our hearts be fixated. Let's our, let our hearts be focused on God and let's see his presence. Let's see his will in our lives come true. Let's all close our eyes today and let's all just look to God uh, in this moment. I'm not going to point fingers. I'm not going to Ask somebody, you want to come up, you understand? But I feel like each and every one of us, let's, let's make that prayer today. Let's say, God, I want to will, my heart, I want my heart to be with you. Like David, God, he, he, they call him a man after God's heart. I want to be the person after God's heart. I want to know what's God's heart for my life. I want to know the will of God. I want to know the purpose of God in my life. So let's make that prayer today in this time and in this moment. And let that be a prayer. You know, this is, the Shema was a prayer even they do today. It was passed through generations. Let that prayer be an eternal prayer for our lives, and not just our lives, but our generations to come, that God, let me know your heart. Let me love you with all my heart, with everything I have. Not part of it, not bits of it, but all of it. Make my heart pure, Holy Spirit. Let me know you. Let's make that prayer today. And I'm going to pray for you today. Our Heavenly Father, we come into your presence, God. Lord, your word says you're a God that sees the heart. Every man is right in his sight, but God weighs the heart. You weigh our heart. You see our heart, God. Help us to have an inward transformation, Lord. 
Help our prayers be a reflection of our convictions inside of God. Help us to know. Help us to believe. And let our prayers be, let us believe in our prayers in such a way, Father, that this is what I believe in and I'm willing to die for it, God. I'm willing to give my everything for it. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you, God. If you made that prayer today, I believe that the Holy Spirit will do His work because He is faithful. He is not man. He is the Spirit of the Almighty God and He will do His work. And I hope you be blessed in your week. Thank you.